Kubernetes for Humans. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of the Kubernetes for Human. I'm Itiyah and today I have with me the show Daniel. Daniel, right? It's me here. Sounds good, yeah. Yeah, so do you want to introduce yourself, maybe? Yeah, sure thing. So my name's Daniel Bryant. Uh, I've come from a Java development background, and then moved into a bunch of architecture and ops, uh, and then sort of build some platforms. And I've literally done everything from coding all the way to CTO kind of roles. Uh, I jokingly say, like, job titles are like Pokemon. I want to affect them all, right? Uh, but the real reason, I, I love learning. I love learning new stuff. And um, that's why we're here, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the reason. So try to give us a bit more color. Like, what companies, where are you at now? Show us the journey. Yeah, so I'm at now Syntasso. We're building Kratix, which is a framework for building composable uh, internal developer platforms. So having myself been a, a platform user back in the day, uh, but mainly as a consultant, I worked for a company called Open Credo in London for a number of years. We worked with big companies like banks, we worked with smaller companies, and there was always some element of platform building. Right, and I enjoyed doing that. I was always the Jenkins person, always building out the CI/CD. Right, movie like yeah. sandbox, like everything DSL, like. I, I loved it. I, I really enjoyed like infrastructure as code. I enjoyed like knitting together all the things like for building my applications. And then, yeah, when I, I've known the founders of Syntasso for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I've watched their journey. They've done a bunch of interesting things. And when they started creating Kratix, I was like, hey, I've built similar things in the past. I've seen like certain problems like, like Kratix shaped. Uh, and then uh, I sort of, I was working at Ambassador Labs and then I, I moved, uh, sort of, I finished that role up there. And then when uh, Syntasso were like, hey, do you want to come work for us? I was like, why not? Awesome team, awesome products, and here we are. So what is like the current title? As I'm head of product marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've done a bunch of DevRel stuff recently, but in reality, at a startup, you do whatever's needed, right? And I found I was doing a lot more product marketing because I have been a developer, because I've also been an operator, a QA person. I can, you know, speak the language. I can understand. I can empathize. Because I think a big thing with platforms, that I'm passionate about building platforms as a product. If you're building them as a product, you have to know your customer, right? You, do. you can't just be like, I'm going to build this for you and you're going to use it. So like my sort of superpower, if some folks have said, is the ability to bridge the, the people and the technology, which is, like, I think, increasingly important in what we do, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So maybe share a bit more about what is the product exactly? Because I think that I'm not sure if I completely understand this. So Practix itself is a framework for building platforms. Mm -hmm. And the two key things to understand is you can build APIs that are relevant to your business. So it might be something like a database as a service API, but you could also compound these things and maybe even do higher level services. So for example, we work with a lot of banking customers. So like you have a know your customer service or a fraud of next yep, that's right? So and if you open that service, it's actually like a Java service, a database. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so like we say turtles all the way down. That's like kind of the phrase we use. And good, very good for your thing at the conference, right? Yeah. <laughs> Plus all the way down. But not only do you have the API uh, being able to be defined, we help you manage the life cycle. So we basically have a series of pipelines and hooks that you can do. You can build, say, a database, deploy a database with like Terraform, Crossplane, Bash, whatever you like. You can do security scanning. You can notify someone by Slack. Do some auditing, do some financial checks, right? Whatever is relevant to your business, we allow you to encode in a series of workflow steps. Uh, and you can run them at an arbitrary point in time. So say you discover a vulnerability, like in Postgres or something, you can, uh, everything that's managed in Kratix, you can very quickly roll out the latest version. We saw a lot of folks struggling with like Heartbleed and Log Shell, all that kind of stuff. Um, in fit, like, you know, you've got to do the hard work of putting your software, your platform in Kratix, but once it's in Kratix, very easy to understand what's where and very easy to upgrade it. Okay, so like who, who is the enemy? Like, who are you fighting for? Who are the customers? Yeah. No, not the customers, the enemies. Like, who, who is your competition? Oh, competition? Yeah. Oh, interesting. So in the, uh, like, sort of the platform orchestration space, so that we, like, we broadly sort of adopted this term, platform orchestration. The main folks are, there's Kratix, there's Fusion Stack, which is a CNCF sandbox project, open source project, and there's Humanitech. So Humanitech do a graph-based platform orchestrator too. And we also do see a little bit of the portals. Yeah, exactly. Like Backstage and so on, and Portex. What? So Cortex, we see like, they're awesome people, right? And, and Port, love the Port folks as well. And we work, like, we're, we're sort of, we're a complementary story. As much as like, you can actually, like, you can get very far with Port, Cortex, even your own on Backstage, or you're writing your own plugins. And um, we sort of um, enable you to abstract a lot of the workflow stuff they do at a more platform API layer. And if you're sort of looking at, say, portals that being almost competitors or being in the space, there are things like Crossplane and Terraform, same, right? So with Crossplane, you can actually, uh, something called Compositions. Yep. You can put arbitrary code in that and kind of do life cycle management. 
But the way I look at the world is there is three tiers. There is this like application layer, platform orchestration layer, and an infrastructure layer. You can mix them up a little bit, but my software architecture days say that having clear domain boundaries, clear APIs, are the way forward. That's why I believe like Prefix is a good fit for that middle layer. No, so it's interesting. So big companies are going to you and you have them to manage the database and all of it? Yep. Databases, queues, highlights. How big are you? In terms of people? The people. We're about 15 people now. And, and like, it's not like a bit scary for big companies to trust you guys or in any company? I'm sure it is. You know, like we've definitely got paying customers. <laughs> uh, like we've you know, got good ba- uh, sort of good backing in terms of our experiences. Practically everyone at Syntasa has built a platform, mm-hmm. has built components. Um, and like I say, we, you know, we definitely care a lot about what we're doing. So we're very much a product company. So people are investing in the product. And again, a good chunk of that product is open source as well, Apache 2 license. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely working hard to convince customers that like, hey, we can support you on the journey. And we're all about teaching them to fish. You know, not, we're not giving a fish, we're teaching them to fish. And um, so that's the big muscle. As long as they see the, the Pratix delivers and we can support them delivering as well, everyone's happy. No, it, it sounds good. So, so what's that? Plans like you are new, right? Like, yeah, we've been around. Well, Pratix it has been around about three years. Ah, really? Yeah, yeah. The founders that we're working on it sort of in stealth for like a year or so, and then hired some other engineers on after that. And then the actual open source project is about three years old. Okay, okay. And they they took you because now we are going to get bigger, like the company. Uh, we said hope so. <laughs> you were here sponsoring Pat Eng Day, uh, which is fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, we did a whole day of that sponsorship there. We decided not to sponsor um, KubeCon, but uh, next year KubeCon is going to be in London, which is our home city, right? We're based out of, out of London. So we may even sponsor more there, but the, the plan is definitely, you know, bring on more customers, um, grow, grow to a reasonable size for sure. And then what do you hear from the folks that are in, in KubeCon? Like, what's the feedback on the product, on the problem, on the future? Yeah, I think it's good. I'm definitely hearing a bunch of folks like recognizing platform engineering is a thing. So at Plat Engine Day, people are like, we're doing this. We might not call it exactly this, but now I understand we are doing platform engineering. I do, do see a big lean into platform as a product, like I mentioned as well. Folks are recognizing developers are customers. We have to build stuff that solves their problems, which sounds really obvious, but a lot of people like platform teams just build platforms, right? They think about goals and things. So I am glad to actually see folks really embracing that notion. Um, I think KubeCon is still a very infrastructure-focused conference, right? I don't see many product managers here. I don't see many uh, sort of like the leadership type folks. You know, I see a couple. Like we had like three or four in our booth. I was quite surprised. Yeah. Oh, like but, like technical product managers for platform, right? Like not like uh, yeah, yeah. So we we met. I'd like to see more. Yeah, you know? with, with with one of the PMs of BlackRock, like the one responsible oh. for their compute layer. Yes, and she came to the booth that's and so on. Cool. So yeah, yeah, that's that's nice, right. Yeah. You know, I know they exist. So I checked. But it's not a lot. Not a lot. Like yes, it's, it's not the common thing. No, so you think like in the future more products will come as part of like the shift for a platform? I hope so. I do. I mean, some of the other conferences I've been to, like the Coupon conferences with InfoQ, we get a whole mix of folks there. Because like you are delivering a product, you need that business understanding, you need that product management, that project management, you need user experience, right? Like you can't deliver a product without all those things. So I, I'm I'm really hoping that yes, as like uh, folks recognize you need to um, have this product management, more and more folks will come along with their engineering teams as well. Ooh. That makes sense. So, so what are the trends that you're maybe seeing here in, on the floor, like in Kubernetes, in Kubernetes? Yeah, so actually in this year, I'm seeing less AI, which I thought was interesting. Like, I think last year, I saw everyone's yeah, big yeah. stuff, right? There is definitely AI here, but like less like I think of the hype we saw last year, which is kind of good, right? So people are focusing very much on the, on the problems. Like I'm seeing a lot of folks now offering end-to-end solutions, right? Be it security, be it observability, these things. Um, so definitely strong trends still in security and observability. Oh, so it's there. Right? Strong trends in CICD. I was trying to the Argo folks earlier on. And that's very much like becoming a thing now with like the um, Octopus deploy folks taking in uh, Codefresh and other folks. Yeah. But like people are really focusing on the core components of their platform. I think the overarching thing is you need a platform as a product. But if you look around the floor, everyone's really focused on doing certain things well. Security, observability, CICD would definitely spring to mind. And um, communication stuff, I saw a whole bunch of API gateway vendors because I work in that space too. The service mesh folks are still kicking around as well. So I just see like maturity is, is picking up and which is, is yeah, having been like Kubecon since day zero, it's really nice now to see we're focused on actual solving problems, right? I feel that the infrastructure itself where is like in a cer- certain point that enable us to focus on other things, right? Like yeah. 
KubeCon in its early day wasn't stable by itself, right? Like yeah, a, enough, right? yeah, yeah as, as, as any new and like a full new product. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So, so what do you see in the future? Like three years from now, we meet again in KubeCon. What do you think the boots are going to be about? Uh, yeah, interesting to say that. So as much as I said, we're not seeing so much AI now, I just think that big bloody sites ironic, right? Or uh, cliche, I should say. I, I do think... Um, but we're seeing like a lot of benefits with co-pilots for coding, right? A lot of developers are chatting with their loving co-pilots. Well, and they're just, I do. I do. Fantastic, right? So, I, but I'm not seeing that engineers use it yet. So clearly, like, if developers are getting some performance boosts, you know, 30 percent quicker number, cloud engineers, I believe, will be embracing that too. But I think it's going to be less AI branded, but it's going to be more part of the product. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like it make, like certain products will make recommendations or um, they'll, you know, create pull requests that then you just, as humans, we as humans, review. So I definitely think that is Until where... the AI will also review, right? Like, who knows, right? I mean, there's th- terms like uh, agentic being banded around, like, you know, as in like, be almost like other members of the team will literally be agents, will be the AI. Uh, who knows on that one? Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping that Kubernetes continues to get pushed down the stack. We're seeing that already. And high level contracts emerge where developers can just focus on getting the work done. So they're not writing CRDs. They're not understanding about some of the you know, storage allocations in Kubernetes. They maybe are using more nat- natural language-like interactions to, to get stuff done. You know, I need a way to deploy this application in development. Here's a way in staging. Here's a way in production. I'm hoping it's like more natural way of, of building, uh, coding, shipping, running, as we say, uh, occurs. And what do you think about like platform compared to dev compared to DevOps? Like, where is dev going to be in a couple of years? That is a great question. So I've had a number of chats uh, around the, the showroom floor. Um, whereas, like, you know, I come from an era of dev and ops, yep. like, you know, being very separate. We then saw DevOps come together, but I'm worried now a little bit. I'm seeing platform and dev, like, they've heard. off. Yeah, which I think is a real shame because like, I get, like, the whole DevOps thing doesn't always scale. Yeah, if you work for, like, we work with a lot of banking companies, a lot of regulated companies, like, you, like, you build it, you run it, doesn't always work. You can't have 10 different ways of doing security, right? 10 different ways of doing observability, just like the auditors. Yeah, no, honestly. Like that, right? So I definitely think, like, notion there is a value in having a centralized platform but it's still when it becomes like them and us it's really hard to get work done right and i and I, I am a bit concerned that we focus on the technology quite a lot and not always on the people side of it oh, I agree. a lot of it's like having conversations right it's like chatting and saying hey i need this what, what can you give me and like we negotiate on these kind of things i think and i get it because i've been a programmer like we we want to avoid conversations we sometimes yeah. you no know? we want like just the, the platform to abstract everything away and that it's not possible. Okay, so less words. Like, do you want to say something to the public, to our listeners? I say, if they're building platforms, build it as a product. That's the thing I'm going to say to folks. Like, definitely check out Kratics. There's other frameworks that do exist in this space too, right? But I'm a, a firm believer that if you're building a platform, and let's be honest, like everyone is working with a platform now, but if you're consciously interested on uh, consciously building a platform, do check out the frameworks out there. As I see a lot of people reinventing the wheel and like, why do that when there's open source projects out there you can build upon? So check out credits, check out the fra- other frameworks around it uh, and hopefully have a lot of fun and ask me questions if you get stuff as well. Okay, sounds good. Pleasure having you. Thank you very much.